Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. It's a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Friends, welcome back to God's Playbook. Happy Monday to you all. Today's psalm at Mass is Psalm 145, The Lord is Kind and Merciful. And I think it's appropriate that we kick off this week following the Lord's Day with this reflection, that the Lord is kind and merciful. In one sentence, this really describes who God is. Kind and merciful. So let's first start with the kind. What does it mean to be kind? It's very different from being nice. Nice and kind are different things. I think nice is so generic, but kindness comes from the heart. To be nice, you could pay someone to be nice. I wonder if you could actually pay someone to be kind, but to me there's a difference. And God is kind. What does it mean to be kind to someone? Well, when we're kind to someone, it talks about our attitudes or behaviors towards them. It isn't reciprocated. When I'm kind to you, you might be kind back to me, but my kindness to you should be separate from your kindness to me. So when we say that the Lord is kind, that suggests that he is kind to us. This is not attached to the level of kindness we give back to God. We, in turn, try to be kind to God, but this is his first move. The Lord is kind and merciful, so the Lord is kind to us first. And what does kindness entail for the Lord? Well, number one, that he thinks of you. When you think about that, God loves you so much that he's currently thinking of you. If he stopped thinking about you or me, we would cease to exist. So he's kind in the fact that with 7 billion people currently breathing oxygen, let alone everyone that has come and everyone that will come into being, everyone in heaven, hell, and purgatory, God right now is thinking about you. Think about the implications of that. When somebody says, happy birthday, you might say to them, oh, thank you so much. That's so kind of you to remember my birthday. Or they might send you a card. Or somebody holds the door for you. Thank you so much. That was so kind of you. So thoughtful. So kindness is something that is exhibited in a relationship and then hopefully understood or noticed. So God moves first by thinking of us. Number two, the Lord is also kind because he shows unconditional love towards each one of us. Say, Father, this seems pretty basic. Why are we going through this? Well, if we all understood that, then why do some people struggle to feel loved? If we all understood this, then why would we ever sin? Because we never want to disappoint God, right? So it's important to unpack this truth. So when we think about his unconditional love for us, again, there's nothing I can offer to God to make him actually love me. There's nothing I can give to God that will make his life better. And so the Lord is kind because he loves me because he wishes to. It's a choice. He could choose not to love me if he wanted, and yet he never chooses that choice. He always chooses love not the absence of love. Now, he's still a gentleman and gives us the gift of free will, sure. But that allows us to love God or, heaven forbid, not love God. So the Lord is kind because he's thinking of us, therefore he has brought us into existence, and he shows us unconditional love. The Lord is also kind to us because every time I sin, he could smite me from the earth, but he chooses not to. The Lord is kind because 
he, as the second part of the sentence says, is merciful, yes, but the Lord overlooks my faults. Or from yesterday's scriptures, as St. Paul reminds us, brings strength to my weakness. So the Lord is kind because he also helps. Even sometimes when we don't ask for his help, he fills in the blank because without his help, we would cease to exist. The Lord's also kind to us because every blessing we receive in our daily life comes from his hand. So the Lord is kind to us because, again, he gives freely without expecting anything in return. Because, again, I can't pay God back for the oxygen I'm breathing. I can't pay God back for putting me in Canada. I can't pay God back for giving me my awesome family or my parish family or my vocation or my anything. There's nothing I can give to God. Say, well, you can give him your love. Sure, and he asks for that. But it's not contingent on him blessing us because, as the scripture says, he sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous and the sun on the righteous and on the unrighteous. So God shows no partiality in many respects with daily blessings. God is also kind because what he does is he puts other people in our path too. So he hasn't created us to be isolated, but rather he has created us to be in relationship first with him and then with other human beings. Because at the very core of the human being, we wish to be loved and in relationship with one another. So God is kind because he exposes us to other people. No different than we think of about Adam when he created Eve. It's to be his equal, to be in relationship with him. Man should not be alone. Let us make him a helpmate. That's what the book of Genesis tells us. Lord is kind because he also sends us friends, people to laugh with us, cry with us, hold our hands, support us, embarrass us, help us, annoy us. This is also kind because it keeps life interesting. God is also kind because he's made us all differently. Now, we all know that some people feel that they are the second coming of Jesus and perfect, but we know nobody's perfect except God. So the reality is, because we all think differently and act differently and do things differently, it creates variety in life. So God is kind for that reason. God is kind because he allows us to be in his presence. Though unworthy, God is kind because he allows us to be around him. God is kind because he thinks about us and giving us the church to help shape us, to get us to heaven. He could make life a lot harder for us by not telling us how to get there, hoping that we'll just figure it out. How many people don't know how to figure out just today, let alone how they're going to get to heaven, right? And I don't mean to slam people, but the reality is we are sheep. We need a shepherd. God is the shepherd. And so again, he is kind. We know that God is kind because he sacrificed himself on the cross for us. He is the atoning sacrifice. By the way, all these descriptions of kindness are not in any particular order because obviously that is the most significant way in which God is kind. God doesn't wish to condemn us to hell. He gives us so many different ways in which we can repent, that we can offer sacrifice to him. God is kind. He accepts our prayers. God is kind because just like when a kindergarten kid p paints or colors a picture and hands it to mom and dad and mom and dad have no clue what it looks like and yet they hold it up like it's a Picasso, that's how God is with us. He takes our little deeds and he transforms them into mighty deeds even though they are actually little deeds because God takes delight in his people. So he's kind. When we make mistakes, God is patient because he's kind. When things don't go our way, we blame him. He's still kind. He could be very mean to us. Thankfully, he's not. When we think that we should do things our way, God is kind when we tell him what to do. He doesn't cut us off. He's still kind. Imagine if I were to tell you all the time, you don't know what you're talking about. 
I think eventually you might get sick and tired of hanging out with me. But God is kind because he puts up with us when we do the same thing to him. God is kind because he comes to us in Holy Communion. God is kind because he blesses us with the sacraments. God is kind because he gives us good health. And when the doctors and nurses say it's not repairable, can't have surgery, or it would only take a miracle to keep someone alive, God is kind. God is kind that he gives the miracle of birth over and over and over again. God is kind. Friends, we could be here for the next hundred years talking about all the different ways that which God is kind. I want you to focus on how you think God is kind in your own life and how God has blessed you in so many ways with an attitude of gratitude. We need to start being kind to him. Let's skip over to merciful. God's mercy should speak for itself, but can never be outdone in speaking of it because his mercy has no end. Again, this doesn't mean we should just take advantage of his mercy, and yet he's merciful. He's merciful to us sinners. He's merciful to all sinners. He's merciful to you as an individual, to me as an individual. He's merciful to us as a collective. He's merciful to the church. He's merciful to the agnostic or the atheist. He's merciful to the faiths that are not practicing and worshiping him. God is troubled by our sin, but God doesn't look at our sin and damn us. God gives us the opportunity to change and to be converted, just like the people in sacred scripture. They had an opportunity to repent. If they didn't choose to repent, then there's a consequence. So God is merciful to us, but he's also just. And if at the end of the day, we choose not to love him and serve him and live according to his commandments, well, we've made our choice. But we can't blame God for not being merciful. Kind, yes, but merciful and kindness needs to go together. That's why the scripture unites the two in today's phrase from Psalm 145. The Lord is merciful. How many times have we as individuals, I know myself at the top of the list, have received God's mercy, though unworthy to? God is amazing. I go into confession as a sinner. I come out of the confessional forgiven. I go in deserving hell. I go out receiving his mercy. I go in frustrating him, disappointing him. I come out refreshed because he loves me. God rewards people for their faithfulness to the thousandth generation. So when we think of mercy, we also recognize reward. He knows what I need, thereby he gives it. He knows what I want, and sometimes he gives what I want, too. Sometimes we ask for something, and he gives us something even better. That's a little bit of kindness and a little bit of mercy all in one. Again, we could spend the next hundred years talking about God's mercy and not even make a dent in it. So it's easy to say, the Lord is kind and merciful but it's much harder to live by. So friends, ask ourselves the question, how can I focus more on the Lord being kind and merciful? Let us spend today on the rest of our lives, not only praying this Psalm, not only understanding these words, but from our heart, having an attitude of gratitude, because indeed the Lord is kind and merciful. For God's Playbook, friends, I'm Father Rico. God loves you, and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us using any of our affiliate links in the description below via Buzzsprout, Ko-Fi, or GoFundMe. Thanks, and God bless.